This is a simple glass tube with a little bit of steel wool inside. And if I place this flame over here, something unexpected happens. The tube starts making a sound. So freaky. This happens because the tube is long enough to create a temperature difference. The air gets hot, expands and spreads out through the tube. Then it gets cold and contracts again. This process repeats itself and creates a vibration. Sound. This is only possible because the air is elastic. You can compress it and stretch it. You can visualize the oscillation by merging this glass tube with another tube with water. As you can see, the vibration makes the water oscillate. What do you think would happen if we added some fuel to the mixture? This is a jar of Moroccan-style meatball sauce. It's pretty good, but it's also the exact right geometry to do something pretty interesting. If you remove the label, drill a 10 mm hole on the lid and pour some alcohol inside, this all of a sudden becomes a jet engine. This is what is called the gem jar pulse jet, and it uses the same effect as before. The alcohol fuel mixture burns, it's up, expands, cools down, contracts and pulls more air inside, which inevitably mixes with more alcohol and burns again. If I let this run for long enough, it gets so hot that eventually breaks. Yep, this jet engine gets pretty hot. And yes, this is a jet engine. I mean, it was. The pulse jet engine was first used during the Second World War as the first rocket missile. It was thrown into the air by a water catapult and then it sustained its flight using pulsated combustion. To make this type of engine work you need to get the geometry right because the combustion needs to resonate, just like a sound. There's a lot of designs out there but I settled on this one. It's called a thermojet. These engines are normally made out of metal but I suck at welding. So in my first iteration I developed this process in which I 3D print a mold and then wrap it in carbon fiber and fireplace sealant. This creates a composite material that is strong and can withstand up to 1200 degrees Celsius. The engine worked pretty well, but it becomes a little heavy, so I was wondering if I can make it lighter. After browsing through Amazon for a while, I found this sheet of steel metal that is only 0.1 mm in thickness. It's super light and it's thin enough that you can cut it with a regular pair of scissors. Even though it's pretty thin, it can take heat pretty well, so I was thinking I could use this to make a pulse jet engine. Like I said before, I'm not very good at welding, but there's a type of welding that even I can do. It's called spot welding. Spot welding is this type of welding, where you weld a thin sheet metal on just a spot by passing a high current through it. Using some pliers and some brass rods, I made one myself, and it works. Well, I guess the next stop now is actually putting the engine together. Cue montage! Tugs, you should be wearing gloves. Shut up.
It's ready. Let's see how much it weighs. 255 grams. Okie dokie, the pulse jet engine is ready and now comes the hard part which is to start it. If I'm lucky it's gonna start the first try, but normally it doesn't. Um, to start a pulse jet engine you kind of have to become the pulse jet engine. And you also need um, compressed air and a lighter, so let's give it a go. Oh, also you need propane gas. I don't think I ever started a, an engine like this with butane gas. I, don't ask me why, I don't know why, I think propane just uh, burns better. Yeah, let's give it a try. Yeah, the engine opened up here. So the engine got hot enough to melt the steel. It busted open. To try and seal the leak, I used fireplace sealant and carbon fiber, just like in the good old days. So at this point I gave up all hope, um, I'm gonna try with hydrogen which is much more flammable. It's also very dangerous so don't try this at home. Well, let's give it a try. The engine did run, but it ran on hydrogen. And in my book that's cheating because, well, everything runs on hydrogen. Hydrogen is very flammable. I think my lack of success is owed to the fact that I'm not very good at metal working. But do you know what I'm good at? 3D printing. I 3D printed a jam jar pulse jet in PLA, and it did work. A few moments later. Well, I give up. It's not melting. I mean, it is mushy. Yeah, I mean, it's deforming, but uh, it didn't melt, which is quite impressive. <laughs> what I need is to 3D print a pulse jet engine in metal, but I don't have a metal 3D printer. So I called in a favor with my friend Bob at K3D. K3D is one of the most advanced companies in metal 3D printing. And luckily for me, Bob is my friend. I put together a model of a simple pulse jet engine and I sent it to Bob. And a few days later, it just arrived on the mail. Look at it, it's so cute. It's a metal 3D printed pulse jet engine. A tiny one. Can barely wait to hear it roar. Or in this case, probably purr. But anyway, uh, I first need to add a fuel line, so let's do that. I've been in love with jet engines my entire life, and the pulse jet engine has a special place in my heart because of its simplicity. Especially this one, because, well, this one was the first one that I printed that didn't melt. If you want to print this as well, I'll leave the files in the description. I will also leave the files for the PLA version. This one you can print in a normal filament printer. If you don't have a printer, well, I can help with that as well. On my last video I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will win a brand new 3D printer. Well, um, this is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya! Why am I not wearing gloves? 
Because I'm stupid! All done. Who needs gloves? I got burned fingers. This is a...